I'm Sam Sachs, filling in for Tom Hartman today. So there's an interesting thing going on in Minnesota right now. It's a pretty interesting state. Uh, there's a fight between the Republican-controlled state legislature and the Democratic governor, in which the governor is threatening to essentially shut down the legislature until the legislature stops with its own underhanded tactics to advance a massive tax cut for the rich at the expense of social services. Joining me now to break down what exactly is happening here is the Minnesota State House Minority Leader, Representative Melissa Hortman, who's representing District 36B. Uh, Representative, thanks so much for coming on the show. My pleasure. So uh, just a quick note to uh, the listeners. I said the Democratic governor. It's actually uh, the Democratic Farm and Labor Party. Uh, does anybody, is there a distinction that people should know about there? Yes, it's really important in Minnesota history that the Democratic Party merged with the Farmer Labor Party. I think it was in the 1930s. And so we are very proud of the F and the L in DFL. There we go. So uh, we've got the governor, uh, Dayton, who is a member of the DFL party, uh, threatening to defund the state legislature here. Uh, it's being described as a constitutional clash. What prompted all this? Well, the Republicans threatened to shut down the Department of Revenue if the governor didn't sign their outrageous tax bill. Their tax bill is unaffordable in the future and will cause deficits. The governor was unwilling to use the 1,300 Department of Revenue employees as hostages in this budget battle, but he thought it would be appropriate to turn the, um, the situation back on the legislators and say, if you want to use employees as pawns, how about your employees? So um, one of the reasons he was able to do this, the governor was able to do, do this, is he has the power of a line item veto. Uh, that's something that uh, even the president of the United States uh, doesn't have. Do you want to explain to the listeners what a line item veto is and how exactly he used it here? Sure. And in Minnesota, we've had the line item veto for a long time. In a line item veto situation, the governor can only line item an appropriation. He cannot line item a reduction in spending, and he cannot line item policy. So, for example, in the Republican bills, there was controversial policy. He can't line item that. The only thing he can line item veto is spending. And so he chose to do that with the House and Senate budgets. So the Republicans uh, in the state legislature have responded to all this by saying they're going to take this to the court of public opinion as well as the actual courts. They're saying that what the uh, uh, governor did here was illegal. Uh, how strong do you think uh, is the governor's case in both those venues? Well, I think it's interesting that the Republicans were willing to shut down the government in 2011 and, and unemploy all state workers. And they were willing to shut down the government again this year if they didn't have their demands met. But now when the governor uses the very same leverage against them, all of a sudden they cry that this is foul play and this is not appropriate. So I don't think in the court of public opinion they will do that well. In the courts, it's an interesting question of whether the legislature is an essential government service that has to be funded regardless of an appropriation from the legislature and the executive branch. The courts would have to decide that we're essential. And now that the session is over, I don't know how essential we actually are. So what is what is the mood sort of within the, the legislature there? I guess, what is like the, the comedy between, uh, you know, members of the Democratic Farm and Labor Party and the Republicans as a result of all this fallout? Well, there was none during the whole session. And I think that's how we got to this point. You know, when we have divided government with a Republican-led legislature and a Democratic governor, the Republican leadership of the House and Senate should have been taking into account Democratic perspectives all through the session and making compromises so that we weren't all jammed up uh, at the end with their sort of their approach, which was my way or the highway. If they would have listened to us throughout, we wouldn't be here. And so there is no really goodwill for them to to ruin at the end of session because there was never any to begin with. I keep thinking about, you know, how things have played out here in Washington, D.C., uh, in which you've seen Republicans employ a very similar tactic where they've threatened to shut down the entire government to uh, exact concessions from, this was when Barack Obama was president, from uh, President Obama, whether it was uh, getting rid of Obamacare, uh, defunding Planned Parenthood. In this case, the governor's just saying, we're not going to shut down the entire government. I'm going to defund just the legislature to get the concessions that I want. It seems to be, as you mentioned, uh, Republicans don't have much of a case in public opinion, considering they've adopted these tactics before. 
Right, and I was speaking with the Senate Majority Leader earlier today, and I said, you know, really, the if you apply the golden rule, do unto others what you would have done to you, then, you, you, you know, you can't be surprised that this is being turned back on you. It should have never been that you were threatening to threat to shut down the entire Department of Revenue if you didn't get your outrageous tax cuts for large corporations, the super rich, and for big tobacco. You know, the governor's perspective is that we need to look at the fiscal stability of the state of Minnesota and prioritize that above all else. And if the Republicans would just relent on some of their tax cuts, they can pick, do they want to uh, reduce the tax cuts for super wealthy people or reduce the tax cuts they're giving to corporations or not give the big giveaway to big tobacco, any of those things would help the fiscal stability of the state. But they're, at this point, unwilling to let go of any of those tax breaks. Democrats are often criticized for not being able to, willing to go to the same lengths that Republicans are willing to go to to win policy battles, that they tend to negotiate away their positions before they even join the negotiating table here. Uh, in this case, it looks like you uh, have uh, a Democrat of sorts, um, playing with a very strong hand for once. Um, I'm wondering what sort of feedback you're getting from constituents on the left um, in response to this move. Is it is it one of applause, like, finally, we're seeing someone with a spine step up, or are we seeing um, concern that maybe we're, that, that the governor is sort of taking advantage of the institutions here? Well, I think Democrats are less comfortable with hardball. So I'm not hearing from people that they're delighted that the governor is playing hardball with the Republicans. But I think those of us who've been engaged in the battle are somewhat satisfied seeing them get a taste of their own medicine. It's a little bit uh, tricky for us, though, because our employees are at risk of not having paychecks in some future months if we can't resolve this. But I think, like you say, you know, Democrats are always looking for a way to get along. And sometimes when you're dealing with an unreasonable adversary, you have to be willing to play hardball and you have to be willing to go to the mat. And I think what the governor's point of view is, the fis fiscal stability of the state is more important than his popular approval ratings in, in the short term. Yeah, I, I hear you there. Um, so how, how, does, how do you see this? And of course, it could go to the courts. We might see this play out in the courts. Ideally, how would you like to see this whole uh, battle play out over the next few weeks or months? The simplest thing would be for everybody to reach an agreement and for us to have a very brief special session to pass the agreement. The Republicans can give a little on the tax cuts. They don't need such massive tax cuts. They do not need to put the fiscal stability of the state at risk for the future just to reward corporations.